All right, welcome into another edition of Catching Up with Tommy Mack here on 1010XL's podcast platform at 1010XL.com. We're on demand there as well on the website. On their app as well, you can catch the uh, the show right there live or on an archived deal. Of course, we're on Facebook. Hello, Facebook. I'm also on my personal Facebook, so great to be on board there here in the 1010XL studios. My show brought to you by my friends at Goodfellas Cigar Lounge and Spirits right there on St. John's Bluff Road. A great spot to hang out during the day. If you like a smoke, and then at night it's rocking with some great nightlife and uh, entertainment. And then, of course, the Southern Grill right down there on the South Bank on uh, Flagler Avenue with my boy Joey Fair. He's been, he's owned the Southern Grill for a long time. Great food, fresh food, Southern cooking. It's it's unbelievable. It's a fantastic place. Go check them out for every single meal. They're open. I'm not kidding. Brunch. I'm brunch. Brunch. Ever hear brunch before? Breakfast, lunch, brunch, dinner, dinner, happy hour, nightlife. You got it. It's all right there. All right, lots to get into today. Uh, we'll talk a little NFL combine, little NFL around the league kind of thing. A uh, big story out of Washington. I don't know how much I'm going to spend time on it, but man, that Daniel Snyder's quite the character. That's not going to end well, I don't think. That that's that's getting murkier and murkier, or more murky. I don't know whatever the cor- correct thing is there, uh, but he's in some trouble. There's no doubt about that. When I talk about combine, we're going to talk about do you throw or do you not throw? And I know there's reasons all throughout the years. You know, of uh, you know, you don't have to throw. It doesn't mean anything if you don't throw. I don't know if the other top quarterbacks are throwing. Don't you want to throw? Unless you got something, you got an issue. I don't know. Maybe you're hurt, or maybe not full strength. I don't know. Maybe your arm's not as strong as you want it to be. Maybe it's more comfortable to throw to my own receivers on my pro day. I get that, but whatever. We'll talk about that, and of course, we're going to talk about our Jacksonville Jaguars here. Locally, uh, Trent Balky and uh, uh, Dougie P, man, they're, they've done some work. Holy cow, have they opened up some salary cap room for this team? They restructured deals for Brandon Scherf, Christian Kirk, and Zay Jones. Uh, of course, they also redid Roy Robinson Harrison uh, Harris earlier in uh, or last week, late last week, and Jamichael Hasty. We'll talk about that. I tell you, I got this feeling, Jag fans. Uh, they're keeping them together, man. It's they're keeping it all together. I mean, you've got. Uh, I, I think they're going to keep Ingram and Taylor. I think they're going to find a way. You know, one thing Trent Balky said, um, not too long ago after the season was, "Look, yeah, w- whatever our cap situation is, what it is. The great thing is we have an owner with a ton of cash, and he's willing to spend it." So yeah, the player loves this deal. Why not? I get I get a chunk of my guaranteed money, if not the rest of it, right now, and I don't have to, you know, I just take it now. Of course I'm going to take it now. And that helps them in the cap. You're helping the team. You feel good about that. Your bank account feels good. Your accountant feels good. Your financial advisor feels awesome. You know what I mean? They're like, hell yeah, take that money. We'll turn that into something. So Uh, I know everyone's like, oh, taxes is la, 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 la. Well, they'll deal with that. But trust me, players want their money. And uh, I would, too. No doubt about that. But, look, I I like it. I like – I'm glad they found a way, Roy Robertson Harris. And, look, the last month of of last year, he played really well. There's no doubt about that. Prior to that, it was eh, up and down. But, look, I, I think they're gambling or betting on the fact that he'll be even better. He'll be even better. He'll take that. And I do like, look, I've said this before on Jaguars today here on 1010XL. The, the, I want the offensive line together. I, there's something to that continuity. I, same for the de- I mean, same for the team, the whole team. You can't keep everybody, but you're going to try your best. Because that continuity, then you add talent. You know, I remember, look, and I don't always want to go back, but I remember, I remember going to camp in 97 and looking around and be like, man, we're we're a pretty good team. 98, more guys came. Not a lot of guys left. Some guys left, but more came. They brought more, you know, more talent. Then 99, holy cow, Carnell Lake. You know, you're like, oh, my gosh. Bryce popped the year before who never should have been covering the tight end. He should have just been rushing the passer the entire time. Um, but, uh, yeah, just add to it. Keep the nucleus. Keep them together, man. 
I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, look, Jermichael Hasty. you know why he's great for this team? Because he can pass block like a son of a gun. And he's good out of the backfield, and he's got the speed that they like. Great, great deal there, too. So I'm, I'm thinking pretty good overall, feeling pretty good overall uh, with uh, the direction the Jags are going, led by GM Trent Balky and uh, Doug Peterson, of course, got to be a big uh, part of that. Uh, at the Combine, uh, players are going to have some meetings, some negotiations going to go on, whatnot, coaching as well sometimes. Derek Carr already getting looks from the Saints, Jets, and now it's being reported the Carolina Panthers. Um, that could be an interesting fit in Carolina for Derek Carr. I'm not a huge De- I, look. Derek Carr will get you the yards. He'll get you the touchdowns. He'll 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 make things look really really good. And then there'll be you know when it, it comes crunch time. I don't know if he's clutch, and I think that's fair to say. I think he'll put up a lot of stats. I, I look. And look, that doesn't mean he's not a good quarterback. It's just you got to be clutch in this league if you want to be considered one of the best quarterbacks. You know, you look at Tony Romo, great quarterback, threw for a ton of yards, ton of touch. He threw it all over the place. But when it came down to nut crunch time, he never, you know, got it done. You know, you got to be clutch in this league as a quarterback. And look, if I'm fans of these teams, you know, yeah, I would, I see him more in the Saints. I don't know why. I feel like. Pete Carmichael Jr., who his dad was a coach at Boston College. Did you know that? I don't know if you knew that. Uh, Pete Carmichael Sr. was one one of the best, man. He was such a great guy. He coached wide receivers. His son got into it uh, and is one of the top coordinators in the game. I know he's sometimes looked at as a head coaching candidate, but nonetheless, uh, Derek Carr, uh, that could be a good fit for him in the Saints. I don't know if I see him with the Jets. I just... I don't know. I don't know who I see with the Jets because I don't see Rodgers with the Jets either. You know, I don't. I don't know. I think if I'm the Jets, I'm trying to make a make a run. You got four QBs: Bryce Young, uh, C.J. Stroud, Will Levis, and Anthony Richardson. Mm. I've watched Richardson a bunch. Of course, you see Bryce Young. I like Stroud a lot. I think Stroud's my number one right now. I th- I think Richardson is going to blow the doors off his his workout. And it sounds like he's doing a full workout. And he should. I don't know why Bryce Young's not. And by the way, I I, I read where Stroud and Levis may be um, just throwing, not doing all the drills, you know, the, the, the sprinting and the jumping and all that. Whatever. I mean, look, I get why you want to just do your pro day. Why? Because you're throwing to guys you've been throwing through your whole college career at your place. And they script it to make you look good. I mean, I, I don't know. I always found that funny. Like, you know, it's like a highlight film. Yeah, my highlight film looks awesome. Everybody's highlight film looks awesome because they're all highlights of great things that you did or good things that you did. But I don't know. Bryce Young not throwing it. And I know I know, not every quarterback throws. I get it. They, they don't. I just feel like, man, the other three. So there's four they're considering in the top 15. I just named them, right? Three are going to throw. And you're not. I know he's considered way ahead. I don't know if I agree with that. I I, I question his arm. I don't care about his height. I know the height now, oh, he's only six feet. Whatever. I don't care. There's shorter QBs in the league that make, make it work. Obviously, they got to use their feet a lot, but they still make it work uh, with their arm. I think he's got a good arm. I don't think his arm blows you away. And I'm one of those guys, I want to see a cannon. I, I'll hone it in. I'll find a way to hone that big son of a bitch in. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want that big arm, strong QB, and now I want one that can run. I want one that can be be effective. And I, I think uh, I think Stroud can be, and I definitely think Richardson can be. I know all you Gator fans are like, oh, I don't know. about. I, I get it. I get it. But I'll, I'll remind you, and I had to do a little digging because I was wrong. I thought it was his senior year, but Josh Allen, I'll think about this. He was in, at Wyoming, his junior year or senior, however you like, I think he was redshirted. He threw for 28 touchdowns and 15 picks. That's in the what? The mountain, what, what, what conference in? I don't even know what Wyoming's in. Regardless, that's who, what he did. The next year, his final year, 16 touchdowns, six interceptions. So what like he blew away? you know, the competition with all these stats. I mean, he obviously, 28 touchdowns is really good. Uh, 15 picks isn't very good against, I know, disrespect to Wyoming and, and whoever they play. Uh, was that the, the the Mountain West? What the heck were that? I can't remember. Anyway, um, 
And look at him. He came in, struggled early, but they honed it in. What did they have to hone in? That accuracy. Kid had such a cannon. And part of it is, look, uh, the reason why you throw so many picks is you believe in that arm so much. And you're like, oh, I can make it. You know, oh, I can make it. You know, I can make that throw. I can si- zip it in there. And in college, you can for the most part. Because why? Because there's hole, more holes. Or the, the, hole is, the holes in coverage are bigger. You know, the pros, they, they, they close quicker and they, they're not that much big. You know, they're, they're very big to begin with. Uh, you know, when you have a chance to unleash it. So I don't know, man. I, I think that's going to be interesting. I know the linemen are coming in. Uh, we're going to look at them. Um, you know, you got to think the Jags are looking at corner very heavy. I would. I tell you, look, and and, and Williams uh, was fine. He was. Um, I just, I don't know. I want another Campbell type. I want a physical, menacing, you know, defense that attacks people. Not sits back in zone and, you know, sees what and read and react. It's too hard to read and react in this league. You got to be the aggressor. And I need DBs, especially my corners on the outside, to be able to press. And by press, I mean you're you're making sure that they don't just get off the line freely. Uh, they don't get an easy route running. We're gonna make them work for it. And you got that in Campbell, but I want to see it on the other side too. And maybe Darius can play. I know he's better on the outside. You know, the stat magicians out there, they'll tell me he is. But um, I don't know. I think I need something better than that, something bigger, something more physical. Uh, We're going to need some defensive line help here in town, no doubt about it. And, uh, and, uh, look, add to the offensive line, throw another weapon into the mix. Good, whatever. Um, add to it. I like that they're keeping the band together, keeping the team together. It should be a very interesting year for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, tougher schedule, targets on their back. You know, I'm, you, I'm optimistic, obviously, very. I can't wait to see it. But at the same time, you got to be a realist, too. You never know. You never know what can happen in this game. Uh, look, I, I do want to bring up um, the, uh, the Washington uh, uh, football team. Uh, Daniel Snyder, I mean, this is crazy. This is like... This is wild, this stuff that's coming out. Now, we already heard about the alleged sexual misconduct um, and the uh, the toxic work environment. Alleged. Um, they're still working on that. They did, actually, they, they fined Washington $10 million and and Snyder had to step down. However, the House of Representatives Committee or something like that, Oversight Committee, looked at that and was like, no, 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 that's that. No, we got to we got to reopen this. So they're looking at that. In the meantime, uh, there's some f- alleged uh, financial misconduct by Mr. Snyder. Now, look, it was it's all revolving around this loan. That's not why I'm bringing this up. I'm bringing this up because there are a couple of things that I found. How do you like these glasses? I don't have my regular. I think these are my wife's or my. I don't know. Anyway, they they work. They may they help me see. Um, the 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 new the new you know why they're looking at him now is this fifty five million dollar loan that he took out that he didn't tell his shareholders that he tried to hide it from allegedly and now there there's this big thing going on. He's trying to sell the team by the way for seven billion dollars. Uh, we'll see if that goes on. Uh, there's allegations of withholding ticket revenue from visiting teams and refundable deposits from fans. Uh, <laughs> this guy's unbelievable. Get this. Paid himself 10 mil a year. Now, I don't know if they, do, do, do owners pay themselves? Do they? I don't know. I don't know if they do, but pays himself 10 million a year. He charged the team four and a half million to put the Washington logo. It had to change a couple of times, I guess. Put the Washington logo on his private jet. Four and a half million said it was for marketing purposes. <laughs> Guy's unbelievable. I mean, yachts, jets. Oh, they're going to peel back. They're going to peel back that onion. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be pretty for Daniel Snyder. Uh, poor uh, Eric, Eric Bieniemy is like, damn, I, I should have stayed in Kansas City. My gosh, that uh, that um, that's not going to end good. I don't. Well, it may. They may. They may find a way to, you know, make sure it's not too big a headline news. But it's big story. I've been wondering about that alleged sexual misconduct because that kind of got swept under the rug. Then I read, you know, the $10 million deal that they find him, but it sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like there was some things going on. 
Uh, it also sounds, from what I read, now granted, this article on ESPN is wicked long. I mean, it's the ADD, I mean, I, I, I don't take ADD medication, but I, I probably needed it to read this thing. It was like a novel. Um, and it was on my phone, so I'm like, oh my gosh, when's it end? When's it end? But anyways, a lot of information uh, with Daniel Snyder, but allegedly, reportedly, that uh, Roger Goodell knew about the loan, but the, the minority owners of the team, which in their shareholder agreement said they had to know about everything financially, and they didn't. I'm paraphrasing here. By the way, they're three billionaires themselves. They own 40% of the team. I don't even know their names, but uh, they are now suing Daniel Snyder for, I mean, this is, this is getting messy, all based off a loan that he tried to get uh, done pretty much under the radar. Um, and then the, just the four and a half million to put his logo on his private jet. That is just, I mean, was it nobody watching the till? Somebody wasn't watching the till up there in Washington, but that's a story to keep your eye on. I think I mentioned Darren Payne first to be tagged. Great defensive tackle, 11 and a half sacks last year. Really prior to that, only about four, three or four every year, maybe five, but last year, a monster year for him. He gets tagged at a mere 18.937 million. How do they come up with that number? I have no idea. Obviously they average a lot of uh, salaries. Uh, so I do kind of know, um, but yeah, don't forget about the nine, three, seven, 19 million a year. I mean, I know everybody, all the players want that big $50 million guarantee, 30 million, whatever, but 19, I, you, you know, manage the right way. You could probably survive off 19 million. I would imagine, you know, I know they want, uh, every player wants more money. Who doesn't? Um, but uh, nonetheless, he is first to be tagged, and Carson Wentz released. Will he get another job in the NFL? That's a question. Hmm. I don't know. I wouldn't want. I don't think I'd want him. I don't know. I'd have to talk to him and see him and watch him work out or something. I just. I don't know. I don't. I don't. After a while, that you know, the the allure rubs off, and it's not that you know. Wow. Let's let's check it out. But um, we'll see what happens. You, you know, look, quarterbacks. They're like coaches. They get in this fraternity carousel and they become backups for hey if you could be a backup qb in the nfl it's not a bad gig not a bad gig graham marsh is here hey graham what's up yes sir how we doing how you doing oh i'm great uh yeah waking up to our jaguar news this morning great news i mean they're doing work big work I absolutely love i love it Trent um, bulky was sucking down the black coffee last night getting getting well, these things you know, done look, again he said and i said this earlier and I'll, 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 I'll say it again but after the season, what did he say? Well, yeah, we're the cap, but we got cash. We have an owner that's willing to spend the yeah. cash. That's what he's doing. Shot kind of saying, okay, what do I have to do? Uh, we need, <laughs> uh, Shot, we need about $50 million. Do you, do you mind? <laughs> yeah, no problem. Who am right. I giving it to? Right. Yeah, these five guys. Great. Get it done. Let's keep them together. I mean, that's what happens. Right? you got to go to the owner and be like, this is going to cost this but it helps us with the cap and then yeah. look over time the cap's going to be big enough where you may not even have to manipulate it all that much you know down the road with these well, new deals so i i love it i, I you got to do it and you knew it was coming right you, you, how yeah, else are yeah. they going to create it yep i mean scherf and kirk and zay jones they they cleared like 26 i don't know how they calculate that they converted 32 million but they got credit for 26 million and some change well, on both sides. You still have to use some of it to this year. Right. Basically, when you when you give them the signing bonus, the signing bonus can be spread across the contract. But so there it can is be this year as well. Right? Correct. Yeah, so yeah. so part of it will still count to this year's cap, just right. significantly less. Right. Because I can I can now divide that number by three or four, right. however long the contract is, instead of putting it all this year. And, and again, we talked about this having cashed as opposed to having to go borrow it from the league is a Big difference for owners. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. cash. Say, he may borrow some of that just to have the interest, but he's that guy's paying. paying say, cash. say whatever you want about Shad Khan. Yep, that's never been a problem for him. No, no, not at all. Spend, spending the money, yeah. having the money—that's yep. never been an issue. No, I know. It's great. And it's great to have an owner like that. Ultimately, it's huge because if you don't have an owner like that, yep. You're, you there's in a lot of ways you're kind of stuck, right? Well, like, true. And but but here look from a practical sense, look, you go to Mr. Khan, you say shot. 
We're close. You can see we're close. We want to keep as many of these guys together. They're part of the culture. They believe in the culture. They love what we're doing. We love having them. Let's try to keep as many together as we can and and keep this train rolling. And then we can add. I mean, I was talking to like back in the 90s when we started winning, right? 97, you could see, oh, wow, we're adding talent. 98, wow, we're not losing talent. We're adding talent. You know what I mean? We might lose a couple guys here and there, but nothing like you draw until they had to, you know, after 99, they had to get rid of Tony and, and Seth and Gary Walker and then Hollis and Keenan because of the cap. I mean, they did. And maybe, I don't know the, the, the situation there. But, you know, what would the, the cap was so different, but we were looking at it too. Who was telling me the other day? They looked at, oh, Tony was telling me, Tony, the Jaguars today, he's like, you know, the cap back in like 90, whatever, eight, it was like 58 million, something like Oh, my that. God. Yeah, I know. Like crazy, crazy how big <laughs> the it Sean is. Deshaun Watson makes I that by it. himself. Yeah, you know what? Exactly right. Exactly well, right. But, but if you're, and it's I great think. to have cash. There's no, and, and again, the owner that's willing to say, I believe in what you're doing. Let's do it. And we'll, we'll figure out the cap situation as we go along. What, like, Looking at like Ingram specifically, because obviously that's you know yeah. who a lot of Jaguar fans are looking at. And will I they think get they can down? keep both Ingram and Taylor. I do. They've got. It's they, not impossible. They, they, what's that? It's not impossible. No, it's not impossible. I agree. They're gonna they're gonna find a way. I um, think that's the whole plan. Keep these guys together. And I think if you're Trent Balky, and I think he's doing this right now, and I think this is wise in my opinion. You nail down. If you believe that these guys are going to continue to be productive players, which yep. obviously they do, or otherwise they wouldn't keep them around, yep. then if you can nail down a lot of these guys for three to four years, it's going to be a total bargain in like two yep. years. When that Amazon money hits and the, oh, yeah. and the cap skyrockets, oh, yeah. Yeah. now yep. all of a sudden it's like, yep. I'm paying these dudes nothing, right. man. If you can Compared. nail... And again... I think Evan Ingram's camp knows this, and this is probably part of why they may not want to sign a long-term deal right now, which is totally respectable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if the Jaguars could get like a four-year deal out of Ingram right now, yeah. and then, if I'm him, I want three. Yeah, I don't want any more than. three. And then all of a sudden, Unless you're looking it's at such it in big money. Then you're like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll do four. And then all of a sudden, you're looking at it in 2025 yeah. from the Jaguars' perspective, and you're like. He's not hurting my cap right now. No, not at all. And he's all. a phenomenal player. Oh, right. Like, right. if you can get into that circumstance. Yep. Whew. Well, and again, it, it, it's keeping everyone together to make another run at this thing. You know? Yeah. And that's yeah. how they feel. And I, I guarantee you, with, with having Doug and Trent and the success they've had with different organizations, Trent with San Fran, Doug with, of course, Philadelphia and Kansas City, for that matter, but before then. Uh, you know, sharing that with Shad Khan, be like, Shad, come on, when you win, there's nothing like, you know, you know, but then when you got guys that have actually won and you're like, come on, we got to do all the, and then he buys in and now they're all together. You know what I mean? And look, I, I think Trent Bell, I, I don't know, you know, his track record year to year with San Fran, but I'll tell you what, since he's been here, his track record is pretty damn good. It is. It is. You can look at the draft picks. You can look at the free agency. You can look at what he's doing now. I tell you what, he's doing a hell of a job. I mean, you, you can't deny that. You can do. You say whatever else you want in the past, whatever, whatever. At the end of the day, this guy is putting together a team, and uh, and and keeping the great, the good players here. It's gonna be interesting. Now, look, I, I, can they find a way to keep Arden Key with all of this? You know what I mean? I'd like to see him back. I'd hate to see him go because he's a good spark plug for the for the pass rush. You know, he gets him he gets that that little match you know lit and and gets him going a little bit. But um, I tell you what, they're I like what they're doing, and I think Trent Balky's done a tremendous job. The biggest next step, in my opinion, if under the assumption that this team has figured it out at least enough to be decent year after year now yep. consistently, and you feel. You feel like you could at least be there with with the quarterback you got, and you feel like oh yeah, you're at least weapon respect. Yeah, you're gonna at, at yep. worst be a respectable team year after year now, right? right? Under that assumption, the next big step for this team and Kansas City's mastered this. From here on out, can the GM consistently make the right decisions in terms of who to keep on the roster? Yep, and. Pay, pay some money and have a cap hit yep. versus who to get rid of and replace with right. cheap draft talent. Yep. Can, well, it's can that, that and then and then draft a good replacement. Yeah. It's that I think it's even deeper than that. I say this all the time. You know, 
the the successful organizations in the NFL don't draft don't just draft good talent. They draft good talent that will thrive under the type of philosophy their head coach has. Like a Belichick, there's certain guys that can't play for Belichick. There's no doubt. But then there's guys like hell yeah, I'll play for that guy because he wins, and I'll do whatever it takes to win championships. It's that culture. So you look at uh, what is Doug talk? Everyone's bought in. They're all part of it. If they didn't, they'd be gone. You know what I'm right. saying? So he wants that. They want to keep that together. Why? Because that was just one year. Yeah. That was the first year. Give me another year. Let's keep these guys together for another year. Let's build that culture even more. Everybody we bring in, they're going to be a part of our culture, or they're not going to be here. Right? We're setting the foundation of what we want out of our culture, what kind of players we want. Not just how they play on game day, but how they are in the facility, how they are with their teammates, how they are you know, out and about, how they are during practice, how they are in the weight room, how they are just being around. That's the culture that they're talking about. And so it's it, that when you got that match is what I'm getting. The GM and the head coach, and the GM's feeding that coach's culture. Are you kidding me? That's like a freaking time bomb. You know, that's just going to grow and grow and grow and boom. And the boom is what? The Super Bowl. And uh, I I don't know, man. I, I like I like the direction that they are they're going. I didn't know what to think with like when I like when I, I you know was asked about Roy Robertson there. It's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was good that last half or you know, last month. He really stood out. But then during the year he was okay. He was good in the beginning of the year. They all were. Then they kind of went in a lull and okay. You know, we're not there day to day. We're not watching the practice. We're not watching, you know, and that matters. That stuff matters. But then I, I thought about it. When I saw it come through, I'm like, you know, I like it. Because you, it, you're you still going to add. You got to add. You need, I don't care if it's in the draft. It'll probably be in the draft. But you got to find more beef up front. There's no doubt, in my opinion. You need, you, need, you need to add to that talent. But I like the fact that him and Foley are back. Him and Devon Hamilton are back. And they're back together. What happens with Swoon? I think he's under contract, so hopefully he can come back healthy and be a big part of what's going on. He's always been solid. Smooth is not what? under contract. He's not? He's he free was, agent? He was in a contract. Yeah, it's going to be tough. So That's going to be tough. It I sucks. thought he signed a new deal like a year ago. No? Mm-hmm. Okay. It sucks because... Yeah, it sucks. Coming when off the, the ACL, too, it'll be, you know... I mean, that, they, they, they fix those things no problem today. You know what I mean? It's not a huge... Yeah, but when, huge. when you're already in... Yeah. When you're already having to figure things out cap-wise, I think... Yeah. I don't know. Smoot, I think, would have been basically a no-brainer before the Achilles. But Oh, without a doubt, yeah. I think afterwards yeah. it's just hard, man, when, yeah. when you're trying That's to justify right. keeping. Achilles. When you're trying to justify Arden Key and Evan Ingram yeah. and, and restructuring everybody else. It, so yep. It's just, it makes it, it, makes it tough. On Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Great to have you here. You're going to see me more on here as as well. But no, I think it's, uh, I agree with you. Yeah, and it's, uh, look, it's. They're keeping the base, the base, the foundation together. Of course, you're going to have to see probably uh, Shaquille Griffin. He'll be let go, and uh, they'll save a bunch of money there. And, um, yeah, I think they're going to find a way to keep Ingram and Taylor. Uh, it sounds like I did see some today, a report out there that Ingram's rep said, look, at the end of the day, they're either going to extend them or they're going to uh, tag them. Yeah. And both sides know it and agree understand it and are okay with it. He's a Jaguar. From what it says. Yeah, he's going to be a Jag. It's good. Hey, if you're him, are you kidding me? Doug just gave him his best year of his career. So did Trevor Lawrence, too. Well, so did Trevor. Trevor did, too. There's no doubt. I think, look, Trevor's doing a great job what they ask him to do, and he's very talented. There's no doubt about it. Doug Peterson, though, why do you play for Doug Peterson? Because he gets you open. He finds ways to get you open, and then you do the rest. And with speed that Ingram possesses, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. So we'll see and how that goes down. Partly back to that that culture you were talking about, yep. and then Doug being just a phenomenal X's and O's offensive coach, and then yep. Trevor progressing and being really good. Yeah. All of that combined, what you're getting yep. is you're getting a culture that is setting guys up to succeed. Yep. So even <laughs> I know I, I got a whole camera now. You're setting guys up to succeed. Yeah. So it, it was like it was like New England back in the day. You know, they draft like Chris Hogan in like right. the sixth round, and he's phenomenal. Right. The Chiefs draft Pacheco in the seventh. He's phenomenal. Like you're you're setting guy Ingram. New York was ready to kick him out. Yeah. New York was done with him. Right. He comes to Jacksonville. He's fantastic. He has a career year. He's fantastic. Everybody wants him. 
They're, they're in that position now. So as you add guy, they, they might draft a guy in the sixth round this year that's a corner or something yeah. or a receiver, yeah, and, he's, and he's fantastic. Yeah. And that's, that's how you win in the league because you can't pay everyone a ton of money. You right. can't. No, you have to draft well. You, you have, have to allocate. To you have well. to allocate resources well. Yeah, and if you can, if you can not dedicate a ton of resources to getting a certain position, and it ends up working out, yeah. now you're really set up to win. Yeah, yeah. And when you have a, a coach and a culture that's set up to yeah. do that, now right. now all of a sudden and I a can GM win. GM that's feeding it. Yes. I mean that, that it goes hand in hand. Now you know? all of a sudden I can win year after yeah. year after year. Yeah. Again, you look, look. Think of think of the successful teams. You know, look at. I'll just pick out Seattle, Pete Carroll and John Schneider. I mean, they built a winner. Are you kidding me? They found the culture that that fits them with Pete Carroll, how he likes to do it, and they kept feeding that beast, and it worked for a long time. You know, and you hope that you got that. I know, I know, I got a lot of Chicago friends. I look, the, the, uh, uh, Ryan Poles, their GM, you know, from Boston College. He's got a big job ahead of him. Right? They got that number one pick. Looks like they're going to hold on to it or trade it. Which I wouldn't look. I, I'm not giving up on Fields. I don't care. I, no, I, I, no, 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 I, no, I would no. take him over all four of these guys if he I was put back in the draft today. Say he was going to come out with these five. Or other four, I'm taking Justin Fields number one. I think he's. And I'm damn sure taking him if he has two years of NFL experience under his belt. Well, of course, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I think they're in a great position. Look, a lot of teams. I don't know. You know, I was talking earlier. Uh, I don't like the Youngs not throwing at the combine. I just, and everyone else is throwing. All the top guys. You know, it's gonna Richards is gonna blow everybody away. They're gonna be like, holy cow! I gotta yeah. have this kid. We they had, are. Uh, They're going to go nuts over him. He is we had, phenomenal we had, physically. We had Denny Thompson in here for uh, yeah. Gator Bites the last horse, week. The, the uh, QB whisperer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was. Uh, he said, and he told us then, he was like, yeah, Ant, Ant's going to do everything. Yeah. Why, why is he going to do everything? Because he's going to <laughs> blow yeah. everyone away right, by doing right. everything. And that, See, that's. He the, should do everything. Right. That's the point. So when I, I didn't go to the combine, but I was afraid to go to the combine because I was told the 40s are slower there. Based on their old turf, not today. I think that because they just had the old astro. I don't even know what it was called. Was it the RCA dome? Then? Yeah, yeah. And it was, everyone ran a so time reportedly. So I was like, well, there goes. I'm going to be exposed. Right. You know what I mean. So I'm kind of glad I'm not going. I ended up running like a four nine in my pro day, but it was just you know I was my track. It, you know whatever. So here's my 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 reason of bringing this up. If I went to the combine and I knew I could fly, are you kidding me? I'd be like, hell yeah, I'm going. If I could run a 4-5, really? Why wouldn't I go? If I'm not hurt now, right? If I have no injuries, if I'm not worried about that, I can't wait to go. You want to say, well, I could bet I did 225, 28 times and run a 4-5 and jump. I couldn't jump. All right? I jumped 30. If I could jump 34, throw those numbers together for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I'd have been like, hell yeah, I'm going. And if you're not injured, I get I get why quarterbacks are a little leery, right? Because they're not throwing to their guys. They're not used to the guys. When they go down their pro day, it's fully scripted to what? Give them a highlight show. Right. That's it. So there's no adversity in that. Is there adversity at the combine? Yeah, you're throwing to guys you, you don't even know. Probably never even heard of some of them. And you got to factor that in. I don't know. If I'm Bryce Young, and I know they say he's way ahead of everybody else, if I'm Stroud, uh, Levis, and Richardson, I, if they're going, I'm going. As a diehard I'm college going. football fan, Sorry. Bryce Young is by far my favorite QB in this class. I, I just from watching I the worry games. about his arm. He's just – I don't think he's got a big enough cannon for me, and I need a cannon. But he's just – his instincts, man – yeah, oh, God, he's so good under pressure and yeah, like in, in tight games. And as you know, every game in the NFL is tight yeah. for the most part. His ability to just deliver when I it know, matters. I know, but Tua did that in college too. You know, Tua was very good like that before his injury. He may have gone number one. Yeah, overall. Tua had Tua had more around him at Bama I just than felt Bryce like Young did. With Tua, I'll go with Tua first. Those guys are always open. It yeah, was wide open. He just throw well, the Bri ball like Bryce, that's not very impressive. Bryce this year did not have that luxury. His receivers yeah. were not nearly as good this year. Uh, now he had Jameer Gibbs in the backfield. Who the was, majority who was of his games, but. he they definitely were better. Two years ago, Come yes, on. when he had Mechie and Jamison Williams. Okay, 
You tell me the guys he didn't have, and I can't even name them. Like when they go against Kentucky, they're not better than those guys, or Vandy, or Missouri. <laughs> no disrespect. I mean, they'd run right past Boston College, too. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what I'm to Not the big games, not the tight games. I agree. And he did perform well. I'm not t- trying to take anything away from him. I just, I just, I, I, I don't know if the arm is where I would like it to be. And, you know, that doesn't really mean that much. But I think the other guys are going to shine. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Stroud too. I, you know, all he's hearing is Bryce this and Bryce that. Yeah. And I think he's got a lot to prove. Uh, you know, Levis, I, I still haven't watched that much of. I know he's got a big arm. Um, what is he like six three? He's not a giant of a guy, is he? Uh, something like that. I'm not yeah. totally sure. Yeah. His, so his yeah, he's kind of like it's funny. He's one of the top rated QBs, but he's under the radar. Like nobody's really even. I mean, yeah. Some people are paying attention, well, but not, not a lot. Levis had a really good year in 21. Yeah. And he lost yeah, he his did. OC. He lost uh, some offensive linemen, yeah. including Luke Fortner. He yeah. lost Fortner. Yeah. You know, obviously right. he yeah, was yeah, with the center, Jags. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he lost his best weapon in Wondell Robinson. He lost all of that right. going into this year and wasn't nearly as productive. Yeah. But but it's kind of an Anthony but Richardson again, thing. The measurables it. are mostly there. Again, I was... I know, he doesn't have the running ability. But. We're going to end it with this. I, I did a... I, I went back and looked... Josh Allen's last two years at Wyoming. First is his only two years as a full time starter, right? Twenty eight touchdowns, fifteen picks that first year. Sixteen touchdowns, six picks the second year. That's not very productive. You would think with a guy that like Josh Allen is now. Can you imagine him playing now? He'd have like 50 touchdowns and three picks. That is the entire reason that Anthony Richardson is being thought about in the top I, 10. I don't play. It's the new. Yep. Why wouldn't you want that if you can hone him in? And what'd they have to do with, with Josh Allen? They had to hone him in. Yeah. He had this freaking cannon of an arm, like a wild stallion horse, and they had to bring it back in. And they did. They eventually figured it out how he could do that. I guarantee you that it's okay. Hey, we know it's a copycat league. Why wouldn't they take in Josh Allen's Anthony first Richardson. year? He was basically a running back, <laughs> right? He just ran all the time, yeah. and don't blame we'll him. figure out the throws later. <laughs> yeah, you know who did that too? Way way back, He's got four rings. Bradshaw was a phenomenal oh, runner. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, I don't I, know what made me think of that, but Terry Bradshaw was a I think I've seen highlights good of runner. him with like some crazy scrambles and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that'll do it for us this time around. Hey, thanks to everybody for checking us out on Facebook, on 1010, 1010XL's Facebook page, and on my personal one. Thanks, guys, so much. Really appreciate you. I uh, want to thank all the sponsors, too. And, uh, look, we'll be back on Friday when I'm done with my radio duties here. Uh, in Jacksonville on Jaguars today on 1010XL from 10 to 12 noon. I'll jump right into the podcast room, into the studio, and crank out another show. Hope you have a great week. Hey, it's Tuesday. You got to work. Sorry. It's a work day. <laughs> Just is, you know. So grind it out. Have some wine later, and it'll be all good. We'll be midweek tomorrow. Until next time, stay safe and be cool out there. We'll see you right here on Catching Up with Tommy Mack. Peace.